Hi everyone, my name is Katie, I'm a primary school teacher from the UK and I'm currently teaching abroad in Hong Kong. Next week I'll be back on the channel with normal teaching related content, but I hope that today's video is useful for those of you who want to start your own teacher YouTube channel. Without further ado, I will share with you guys exactly how I make my YouTube thumbnails using PicMonkey. The first thing that I do is I need to get a really good background picture and I do this by adding in some extra footage at the end of one of my videos. I'll strike a pose or two. If you hold down command, shift and four you can drag across the screen and you can take a screenshot of exactly what you would like to have as your background image. As you can see in all of these different files I need to choose one that's got the background that I'm after. So for example this picture isn't going to make the cut because I can see the plant in the background and I feel as though it's not as clear cut as the second one that I've gone for, as you can see the difference there. I might still use this picture for something, I might upload it to Instagram or use it on social media, but this second one here, as you can see, is just a lot clearer. You can see the file that I'm holding up a lot better and that's a big viewpoint for the video that I'm recording, so I'm going to go with this picture here. So once you've chosen the picture that you want, I load up a program called PicMonkey. So the first thing I do is I open up the image and I can just see it there for a minute, check that it looks like the kind of picture I want to start to edit. Then I will go on to the crop function and I will change it to 1280 by 720. These are the correct measurements that you need for a YouTube thumbnail. I will make sure to click scale photo so that I don't lose this exact measurement. Then I will simply click and drag the box over the portion of the picture that I want to use as my thumbnail. Sometimes I will go back and change this later on and I'll make a different size or I'll crop a little bit more off, but I like to get just an idea at the start of the sort of size that I want to have for my thumbnail. So I will turn up the brightness, the highlights, I will alter the shadows so that the pictures are a little bit darker around the edges and I will change the contrast too just to make the picture pop a little bit more. I also like to increase the sharpness and the clarity of my picture. I think it makes it look a lot clearer and I just like the definition of the picture. I feel as though it makes it look like a better quality picture, which is what I'm going for with this thumbnail. I always like to turn up the temperature on the picture that I've chosen. I think it gives the picture a really nice orangey glow, it makes me look nice and tanned, it makes it stand out. The only problem that I've found with increasing the temperature is that it can make my teeth look a little bit orange or a little bit yellow. But don't worry, there is a tool on PicMonkey that allows you to brighten your teeth back up so that they look normal again. <laughs> Next thing I click is this beauty tab here, the little face. I sometimes will do more, sometimes will do less. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling on the day for this picture. I will often choose to whiten my teeth simply because I've probably used the tool to turn up the temperature in the picture and I feel as though my teeth might be looking a little bit yellow. The next parts are completely optional and just things that I do now and again. If I feel as though my eyes need a quick brighten, I might use this tool. It makes the white parts of your eyes much lighter, but it also makes the dark parts look much darker too. So I think it looks really, really nice and really flattering on a picture. Completely optional as well, you may want to use the airbrush just to smooth out your skin. I don't normally use this a lot because I think it can start to look a little bit unnatural. Like for example, when I just clicked on my nose there, I didn't really like how it looked. So I've clicked it off and taken it away. If you so wish, you can use things like blush to enhance your face, but generally I won't use them very much because I'm quite content with the way my camera picks up the picture as it is. The next part is probably my favourite part of the process. I like to choose a background for my picture. I always change the blend mode to normal. I'm not sure why it doesn't start on there, but it makes the colour much softer. And then I'll often alter the saturation and the fade as well, just to kind of get the picture looking how I want. Taking a larger brush, I will block out and delete all the larger parts of the picture, for example myself, and any props that I might be holding in the thumbnail. And I do try to get this quite accurate, but you don't need to be too exact because a thumbnail picture is actually very, very small once it goes onto YouTube. Sometimes I will go in with a smaller brush at the end and I will neaten up the sides, neaten up the edges a little bit just to get it looking exactly how I like. This part can be quite tricky because if you are holding something in your hand that's quite small or if my hair was out of place for this particular picture, it can be quite hard to edit. So it is something that I've practiced quite a lot and you do get much, much better at this, especially if you do it for a couple of different thumbnail pictures. Um, I think it used to take me probably over an hour to make a thumbnail, but I timed this one and it was 20 minutes. So you do get much quicker at it the more that you practice. If you do make a mistake, don't worry, you can click here and it will take it onto the effect rather than the original picture and you can just erase any mistakes that you make easily like this. 
When you've finished carving out the picture, you can enhance it in any way that you like. So you can fade it down a bit, you can make the saturation brighter, you can really have a play around with the different styles that you want until you find one that suits. I normally go for a sort of middle ground, like I want there to be a background, I want to be able to see some colour, but I don't want it to overpower the actual picture. So I normally take it to about the centre and I leave it there. The next part of the process is adding in the text and the text boxes. If you go over to the side here and select this little butterfly tool, you can choose a rectangle shape. I use this for almost all of the text that I put on my thumbnails at the moment. I have used lots of different things in the past, but at the moment I'm trying to keep the style quite simple and quite snappy, so I've gone for this style quite a lot recently. And I will just get an idea of where I want to put them on the picture. So I'll try and centre them. I like to try and think about what I'm going to call the video. So whatever the name of the video is, I will just put three boxes there, line them up, try and make them quite central. Sometimes I will turn up the fade a little bit as well, just because I like to be able to see the background image. In this case, it's the file and I want to be able to show that in the video. And then I will go on to the text. PicMonkey is really good because it allows you to import any of your own fonts from different websites. I even have a font imported somewhere that my sister made, so it's completely exclusive to me and for teachers. So if you have one made, you can add it in really easily here. However, at the moment, I am trying to keep things really, really simple. So I'm just using a basic font to try and be quite consistent with the branding of four teachers. So I will just keep it super simple and type in the word I want, make it bold, make it bigger, slot it into place exactly where I want it. Sometimes I will just zoom out on the picture for a minute because that gives me a better idea of what the actual image will look like once it has been uploaded to YouTube because it never looks quite as big once it goes onto YouTube. So you need to make sure that anything that you put on can be seen from a distance. So try to get into the habit of zooming out quite a lot just to check up and see that things are looking right. So I will put the three things that I want on there, size them, and yeah, once I'm happy with where my text has been placed, next thing I will do is I will have a little zoom, just check that everything's looking right, and then I will move on to my branding. When I created Four Teachers, I wanted to have a really clear logo, something that I could use again and again when I upload pictures and when I use social media. So I asked my sister to create me a logo and I do have the logo saved inside my hub along with lots and lots of other pictures from Four Teachers. So I always add in the light bulb logo and I will just have a think about where it will fit. Um, sometimes it's really obvious, sometimes it fits really naturally into a corner. Sometimes I have to have a think about where I'd like it, but it will always be there somewhere on the pictures. It just adds a sense of continuity to the branding that I use for Four Teachers, and I think it's really eye-catching as well. So if you are creating a channel at the moment, try and have a think about what your colour scheme will be, and where you're going to place your logo. I really like this one because it's got the sort of purples and greens and pinks that I use a lot in lots of different things that I put on social media. It's also got the hashtag which is something that I will use a lot on Instagram when advertising for teachers and their videos. This could be finished now, I could just upload it like this, there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes in order to get people to click your videos more you can add in just a few little extra bits and bobs to try and make it really eye-catching. On this particular video, I've added in some emojis. I simply went onto Google and I typed in like happy face emoji and then the key is to type in the word PNG. That means you will have a clear background and you won't have the white square around the picture. And then I will just place the images around the text as I see fit. Obviously the vibe of this video is that I had some observations that were really good, I had some observations that were really difficult. So I want it to kind of tell that story without people having to click on the picture to find out. Recently I have been made aware that when searching for images to use on your thumbnail, you should check your search settings are set to for use with modification in order to find free images. For the rest of this video, I will be using emojis, but if you would like some information about ways to search for free images, be sure to check out my friend's blog post, which I've linked below this video. If you prefer to, you can go on to PicMonkey and they have tons of really good images that you can choose from. So there's hearts and stars and arrows and they've actually got their own different versions of emojis on there ready for you to choose from. So there's tons of different things available on there if you want to jazz up your pictures and make them look a little bit more eye-catching. When I first started making the thumbnails, I used to use a lot of the bunting to put text into. That looks really nice. I also often will put sparkle stars in the background of my pictures. I don't really know why, I just feel like it really enhances the actual 
picture and it just makes it stand out really nicely. So I will just sort of layer it in the background and then I will click to delete it anywhere where it goes on top of myself or a picture that's in the background. I don't know what it is, but for me, I feel like once I've put the stars on, the picture feels really complete and really finished. So I don't know if this is something I will do forever, but there you go for now. I really like how it looks. At the end, I always like to just evaluate the picture. I zoom out, have a look. Is there anything I want to change? In this particular picture, I've noticed that I think I would like it to be a little bit sharper. So I might return to the um, sharpening tool and just turn up the sharpness slightly to make the picture pop and maybe enhance the clarity slightly, might make it a little bit brighter, just sort of finish it off and make it feel as though it's really ready to go straight onto YouTube. Another top tip is deciding on the name of your YouTube video. Try to decide on that before you save your picture. I've heard that if you give your picture the same name as your YouTube video, it can help the two things to be found together through search. So I'm not entirely sure how true that is, but I always make sure that I've already thought of the name of my video before I save the picture. I've thought of a name for that one, I'm saving it now, and it will now be available in my hub, which means I can select it and download it to my desktop whenever I'm ready to upload my YouTube video. The final step is to download it. If you go and click here to export to computer, you need to make sure that your settings are set to Sean and that your dimensions are definitely 1280 by 720. That will ensure that your picture is the correct size to go straight onto YouTube. Then you can export it and it will save it straight to your desktop or your downloads. I hope that video was useful for you. If it was, please consider clicking the subscribe button, which is below the video, and turning on the notifications bell so that you know when I post a new video. Please follow me on Instagram for lots of teaching-related content, and I will see you guys on the next video.